things. So these journalists have helped us uh, formulate, choose these questions, and uh, they will be intervening at various points in our discussion. Now, uh, we're going to start with a, a question uh, that we all ask, and I'm sure many of you ask as well. And for this question, we have a um, already a bunch of people who have agreed to answer this extremely difficult question, namely, what is string theory after all? And again, I'm going to go in alphabetical order, starting with Miriam Svetik, uh, who is at the University of Pennsylvania. Miriam. Oh, well, thank you, uh, David. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I have somewhat uh, standard response to that, and uh, uh, I would consider string theory as the prime candidate. Actually, according to David, the only game in town for quantum unification of gravity with other forces of nature. Okay. Uh, second is Juan Maldacena. Uh, who is an Argentinian physicist, but now working at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. String theory is uh, a theory trying to describe the quantum mechanics of space-time. So, it, trying to explain how quantum, how space-time behaves at very short distances, and also at very large scales, because the beginning of the universe joins short distances with large scales. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we now turn to Shiraz Minwala, who is an Indian string theorist working at the Tata Institute in Mumbai. Shiraz. Your mute is unmute. Sorry. Uh, I feel that string theory is the most powerful all-encompassing and far-reaching framework for consistent mathematical thought in physically relevant contexts, yet stumbled upon by human beings. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily. Uh, okay, now we'll go halfway across the world to Hiroshi Uguri, who is a Japanese string theorist working at Caltech and in Tokyo. Sure. Ah, so I'm from the antipodal point from Brazil. So string theory is a theoretical framework to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics, which are in certain situations are well described using extended objects, such as strings as fundamental constituent. There are cases when ordinary approach fails. And in those cases, uh, having string as extended object as fundamental constituent helps. That, that's a, that's a, a great description in one sentence with many commas. <laughs> we now turn back to India to uh, a distinguished string theorist who is now working at the International Center for Theoretical Sciences, Ashok Sen. Ashok. In my old fashioned view, string theory is a proposal for describing the laws of nature in which the fundamental constituents are one dimensional objects called strings instead of point particles. Great. And now is the turn of Eva Silverstein, who is a string theorist at Stanford University. Thanks, David. I would say string theory is a work in progress aimed at formulating space-time physics from first principles, with one of its major goals being to understand the observed accelerated expansion of, of the universe. Wow. Okay. And next is one of the organizers of, of this meeting, a Brazilian physicist, uh, Pedro Fiera, who works at this Institute, Sophia, ICTP. Pedro. So I would say string theory is a theory of uh, quantum gravity that describes big objects 
which however can see as emergent from a theory of point particles with only quantum mechanics. Okay, and finally, and quite appropriately last, uh, Edward Witten, a string theorist who works at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. Uh, string theory is the framework in which physicists have had some success to understand what there might be at a deeper level than the really established framework of physics that we already have. Right. Very close to the way I think about string theory. It's an extension of our extraordinarily successful framework of quantum field theory, uh, which enables us to hopefully understand the dynamics of space-time as well as unify the forces of nature. So these are answers to, uh, you heard, there's not one answer to what is string theory. It, it's a question which we're still questioning. 